you try and prevent things before they build up and eventually lead to meltdown? Do you try to deal with situations head on as soon as they come up or do you leave them, pretend that they're not happening and put your head in the sand? Many people do. My personal feeling, folks, is prevention is better than the cure. And today we're going to talk about that and so much more on the Mind, Body and Soul Tuesday show where we go a little bit deeper. I'm your host, John Morris, and welcome to today's show. Welcome to the Mind, Body, and Soul Tuesday show, where we go a little bit deeper into a specific subject, from mental health, physical wellness, and spiritual stability, to the deeper topics such as anxiety, depression, weight loss, and fitness. This is the only place to go deeper in your self-discovery journey. And now, please welcome your host, Mind, Body, and Soul's very own, John Morris. Prevention is better than the cure. This phrase came from a Dutch philosopher by the name of Desiderius Ezermus in the 1500s. It simply means this, it is better to prevent something terrible happening than to pretend that it isn't happening, put your head in the sand, and when all hell breaks loose, then try and deal with it. Because usually by that point, it's built up into something much more catastrophic than it was when you first ignored the problem. Prevention is one of the best things that you can do, but you need to have an awareness. And it's really, really important. To prevent means to stop, to stop and take check, take stock and put steps in place to stop a terrible end. Now, what does this mean? Okay, power plants, for example, have fail safes built into their core operating system. Computers have fail-safes built into their core operating program. Human beings need to learn these fail-safes. Now I'm going to break this down and make it a little bit simpler for you because I know this is a really, really big topic that could get very, very complex very, very quickly. The fail-safes depend very much on the unique individual. Say for example, you struggle with anxiety, and if you haven't seen our anxiety episode, I encourage you to go watch it. Anxiety usually leads to a massive anxiety attack. We call that meltdown, okay? Now, if you've seen the traffic light system before, you know green is all the positives, and yellow is kind of, hmm, feel a little bit, hmm. Uh, red is the feeling fairly, uh, you know, feeling fairly angry, fairly wound up, fairly all this, that, and the other. And then meltdown, is the complete and utter obliteration, okay, of anything. It's severe anger, it's, it's severe, okay? Do you see where I'm going with this? The prevention should have taken place when you were feeling green, okay? Because by the time, if you suffer with anxiety, by the time you get to that place of anger and frustration and annoyed and, and everything else that's there, it's too late. The same if a nuclear reactor, think of the Simpsons, a nuclear reactor is going to break down. Do you really think they're going to try and stop the problem when meltdown's taking place? No, everybody's running for higher ground, which if you've ever had a severe anxiety attack, you know that other people around you are running for higher ground. But it's really, really important to put those fail safes in, in place. So for example, if you're suffering with anxiety, maybe you've got social anxiety, and I'm just going to pick on a few different things. So if you've got social anxiety, you really struggle being around certain types of people. You've got to ask yourself the question, okay, how often do I need to see these people? Now, if it's extended family, you may see each other once or twice a year. How long can I be in their company before I lose it, okay? Am I able to take a period of time off where I can relax and I can recover? Because we tend to find that when we relax and when we're de-stressed and everything, things work a little bit better. And then the third question you've got to ask is, do I really need to go to this situation? That's going to make me feel really anxious and really, really uncomfortable. Now, I suffer with this. I understand this completely, folks, because there are times literally where I will sit there and I'm like, I can't do this. And I may know about this three or four weeks out from the event happening. And I end up getting, out, getting myself in such a tizzy, in such a place where I've actually had to say, I can't do this. I have to protect myself because I'm not comfortable with 15 people being in a room. And it gets bigger and bigger in my head. Okay, 
So, you know, the other, the other kind of anxiety that I want to touch on is health anxiety. Now, what is health anxiety like? Well, health anxiety is anxiety about your health. Sometimes when you have, and, and people say this is being dramatic or, you know, you, you're uh, you know, blowing things out of proportion, things like that. This is a genuine thing. Someone may have the common cold and feel really, really lousy because it affects us all differently. And they may genuinely think, oh my goodness, have I got, in, in 2020, coronavirus, have I got flu, have I got something really, really bad? And it may just be a really bad cold. When I have a colitis flare-up, you know, and I've got pains in my stomach, for example, I, I usually can tell what a colitis flare-up feels like. But if I start getting pains in my stomach, and it might be from worry, it might be from stress, it might be from the gym, then I start thinking, oh my goodness, have I got, have I got, a, have I got a colitis flare-up? Same if I get pains in my shoulders, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, is it calcium deposits? You know, pains in my fingers, my, is it arthritis? You know, because I know, because of my height, because I've got colitis, because I've got dyspraxia, I am more prone to these things. So people can, you know, really start to play things out more and more in the head. And remember, 20% is what happens externally, the other 80% is what's going on in our sides and in, in, in our head. The other things that, you know, we talk about being preventative are things like overweight. Okay, now, if, if someone said to you, for example, you know, when, when, maybe when you're 15 or 16 years old, if you continue eating 50 candy bars a day and 50 chocolate bars a day and drinking three bottles of Pepsi or Iron Brew if you live in Scotland, I'd throw that one in there, um, you know, you are going to end up rotund, overweight, you know, obese, all these words, then you really need to start thinking in yourself, Okay, well, well, I like the chocolate. This is what you should, this is the battle that goes on people said. I like the chocolate, but I've also got my health to think about. And, and life can be a very, very long thing. You know, if, if you're a woman, you're probably gonna live into your 90s, maybe even older. If you're a guy, you're gonna live maybe 70s, 80s, hopefully longer. But you need to be thinking about, okay, how can I look after my health? You know, and maybe instead of having 50 candy bars a week, you know, maybe you have one or maybe two and you know you space it out and you say well that's not much fun but just think you've got longer in your life then to enjoy these candy bars and, and there's other things so you need to start thinking about prevention steps and i'm going to talk about this a little bit more um you know worry worry is a big one obviously it follows a suit with anxiety because it's in the same family uh, and worry is one that you you know if you're worrying about something when you start to, again, when you have an anxiety attack, when you are clinically obese, when you have, you know, a breakdown in worry, it means that you haven't put the steps in place to, to really deal with these situations when they build up. And I get it, I understand it, it's really difficult sometimes to do that. You know, when you're sitting there worrying at three o'clock in the morning, pulling your hair out, if you trace it back and you say, I should start dealing with this situation here, then things can become, and, and if you take the opportunity to deal with the situation, as opposed to putting your head in the sand and pretend it isn't happening, things can really, really uh, make a big, big difference. Now, I'm speaking about the ideals here, folks. I know for a fact that sometimes life throws you curveballs. This year alone, I have told my midsection twice, I have had severe worry and severe anxiety to the point I couldn't work and I needed basically to sit and stop and do nothing. And that's how I developed the teaching on worry, worry the silent killer. But, you know, had I been, you know, wise enough for my own teaching and applied my own teaching enough with worry, I could have said right at the beginning, okay, you know, you're doing these interviews with people, you've already got 20 guests booked, um, why not just make that into one series and relax and breathe? and focus on the other things that you're doing, as opposed to getting so frantic and so worked up and so wound up. And I can honestly say, folks, that, you know, you know, down the line, I'm not gonna have this same problem. It's a constant battle, okay? If you, if you can do it once, great, hallelujah. But trying to be disciplined and focus enough to do it time and time and time again, that's where you start building success. The final, the final one that I wanna talk about regarding uh, preventative, is and prevention is in relationships. I know personally a lot of relationships struggle, particularly in 2020. Okay, and they struggle for a wide variety of reasons. Um, you know, whether it be sex, whether or not it be intimacy, whether or not it be connection, whether or not it be life changes that are going on, whether it be family struggles. I'm just going to pick on five things because that's more than enough to go through. You know, when 
when two people get together, for example, you know, especially in the early days, you've got, you know, all the intimacy, all the, you know, you're having fun, you're having, you know, sex and everything, and, and you're really, really connecting together, okay? Sometimes in life, things change. Perhaps one partner wants it more than another, and maybe the other partner obviously wants it less, and maybe life gets busy, you know, all these different changes and challenges happen. And it's important, and we're going to talk about this in our relationship teaching, but it's really, really important to pair yourself with somebody who you don't have to explain your soul to and your needs to and your desires to over and over and over again. They get it, they understand. You know, two people can be highly sexed together. Two people can be low, low sex drive together, okay? And it works. Relationships struggle, obviously, when one is more than the other, all because of pornography and all the other stuff that's online these days, when unrealistic, unrealistic expectations are expected of one partner over the other. You know, and again, this is something we're going to talk about at length, you know, through, throughout that. And I can't do it justice here, obviously. But relationship happens, and relationship issues happen when the, the, the members that are in the relationships fail to to, to kind of spot the warning signs. You know, is he or she spending more time away from me? Is he or she kind of being, you know, cold with me, avoiding me? Is he or she, you know, whatever it might be. And at that point, you have to, have to, have to, have to. And it's not fun. And again, this is another topic for another time, but confrontation or communicate, don't confront. I think that's the better way to put it. But, you know, so many relationships struggle with communication, with sitting down and actually having that conversation. And unfortunately, a lot in the Western world, folks, where they refuse, and this particular guys, where they refuse to sit down and say, honey, you know, I'm struggling with this. Or, I, you know, we, we used to have lots of sex, we used to have lots of intimacy, but I feel maybe that spark's gone. You know, or I'm struggling with pornography. Whatever it might be, if you can have the open and honest relationship with each other, where you can say, you know, I'm struggling with this, I need your support. That is, you know, that's gonna bring you two together eventually in a really, really strong way. But if you're sitting there saying, and again, I'm just going to finish with this because, you know, I'm aware number one of time, but number two, you know, this, this is a topic for another time. But if you're sitting there saying, well, I can't talk to my husband, I can't talk to my wife, I can't talk to my boyfriend, I can't talk to my girlfriend. You really, really need to think, what does relationship, what does the definition of relationship mean to you? Okay. Now the relationship, people often think about it being sexual. It's nothing to do with that. That kind of comes second or third in the list. Relationship is how you relate to another, okay? So whether or not it be sharing the same interest, whether it be sharing the same energy, whether or not it be whatever it may be, you've got those fundamental connections together, sharing the same faith, sharing the same journey, sharing the same spirituality, whatever you want to call it as. It is really important that you don't ignore warning signs because like I say, when it gets to the end, and, and I honestly believe this, folks, as, as someone who's been married now for nearly seven years, you know, I, I, based on the coaching that I've done with other people and based on what I've seen of other people, when they get to the point and say, you know, my, I'm, I'm leaving my husband, I'm leaving my boyfriend, I'm leaving my girlfriend, I'm leaving my wife, I always ask them, how long have you been feeling like this? And they usually come back with, well, I've actually been feeling like this for six months, a year, two years. In some cases, it's actually been as long as five years. And I always say to them, it's like, well, what, what, you know, what drew you two together? That's the second question I ask. And they will often say, well, you know, I met in a bar or, uh, you know, I, I met at church or I met in the youth group or, you know, we started out, you know, being so close and so happy and all this whirlwind and excitement going on and then we just gradually grew apart. I hear that so often. And I walk them through, I said, okay, what were, you know, if, if you had to list five steps that led you to this point of, you know, wanting to get away from your significant other, what would they be? And, and, they, and they do, and they list all these different steps, and it, see, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's bigger things. Okay, initially it starts out really small and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that is the whole thing about prevention. If 
boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, significant other, whatever you want to call it, had sat down with a husband or, or boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, you know, blah, 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 at, at step one, instead of thinking, oh, well, that's not really that big a deal. We, we, we convince ourselves that's not a big deal. If it goes against your core principles, if it goes against you and the relationship agreement that you two have made, then it is something worth having the conversation about. Katie and I have a very, very open and very honest conversation a lot of the time. And that has helped us both to stay on track with each other and helped us both to grow as people. Folks, I need to stop here because obviously, you know, there's so much more to cover on this, but I need you to know this, prevention is better than the cure. For some people, their cure in a relationship is divorce. For some people, being overweight ends up with liposuction, ends up with tummy tucks, has a whole lot of medical complications and all sorts of stuff. For some people, when they're getting to, you know, the, the end of worry, that's when they have the breakdown. For anxiety, if you're having anxiety attacks, and remember, we can only control ourselves, and this is coming from somebody who's suffered anxiety attacks, worries. I haven't suffered obesity, um, but self-image certainly as a bodybuilder, and certainly with relationships. When you are reaching the end, or when you're reaching that meltdown stage, it's because you haven't put in place steps of prevention. Don't wait for step five. If you're aware of having an anxiety attack at step one, Pay attention, it's really important. So what I want you to do for your homework this week is this. I want you to figure out three areas, and you may not have three, you may only have one, but three areas where you are struggling the most. Have an honest conversation with yourself. It may be, hey, I'm struggling with pornography. I'm struggling with addiction. I'm struggling with alcoholism. I'm struggling with, you know, anxiety, worry, fear, you know, on and on and on, obesity. I'm struggling with my weight, okay? And I want you to be very honest with yourself. And then I want you to say, right, I now need to take some preventative steps to change this. If I don't want to die from being obese, and we're going to talk about this, all of these things, folks, we're going to talk about at length in, in, in additional teachings. But if I don't want to die, you know, early from obesity, I need to take some steps now. Not five years down the line, not five, you know, decades down the line. I need to take some steps now. If I don't want relationships to break up, first of all, you've got to pick your partner very, very carefully. That's really important, but again, we'll get into that. I need to take some steps. Oh, most important, we need to take some steps. So sit your partner down and, and have him watch this video or her watch this video. If you're worrying, if you're anxious, okay, well, if you just had a full-blown anxiety attack, you're in the perfect position because actually you end up, you know, bawling it all out and then get to the point where you're like, okay, now what do I do? Now at least you're focused enough to be ready to think. And what I want you to do then is to start putting some steps in place. When I start feeling tired, when I start feeling that I'm going into that amber stage, I need to do this, this, and this. Okay, maybe it's sitting on my feet or maybe it's, you know, seeing my best friend, maybe it's having a pizza, maybe it's whatever it may be but really think about the steps because by the time you get to step five, remember, that is, that's, that's the meltdown stage. Okay, now I know it sounds like maybe I'm repeating myself through a lot of these teachings. Repetition is the mother of skill, in case you wondered. And on that note, folks, we're gonna close up now. I wanna thank you so much for watching uh, this Mind, Body, and Soul. Prevention is better than the cure. I've been your host, John Morris. As always, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe, comment, tell us if this video helped you. Let us know if we can help you further. If you've got any questions, get in touch with us, either here or at thebattlesweallface.com. You can check us out there. You can check out additional teachings, audio, literature, all sorts of stuff, and on the podcast as well, and blogs, so much more. Tell a friend because it may be the very thing that helps them in their relationship or in their struggles and in their journey as well. Until next time, take care. God bless. This has been the Mind, Body and Soul podcast Tuesday show where we go that little bit deeper into a given situation and circumstance and helping you find balance in the craziness of day-to-day -day life. And I've been your host, John Morris. Take care. Do you struggle with motivation? Feel yourself procrastinating a lot? Have amazing ideas and dreams, but struggle with the concept of how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Or maybe looking for something a little bit simpler, like wanting to get fit, 
or maybe wanting to lose a few pounds and tighten things up? Are you someone that struggles with anxiety or trauma or even depression? You're not alone. Many people around the world do. Hi folks, I'm John Morris. And for the last two decades, I've been working with people from all over the world in all walks of life to really understand human beings, the concept, the behaviors, and ultimately the reasons why. And I've had the privilege of coaching and working with folks just like you, that maybe are struggling with anxiety or depression or trauma or wanting to get ahead, wanting to maybe build some long-term success, but have no idea how to begin. This is what I do. And with John Morris Life Coaching, you're in really, really good hands. Why can I say this? Because you're not only gonna get an experienced life coach, you're also gonna get somebody that has a wide variety of experiences, from youth ministry and working with teenagers and children, to someone who's worked with drug addicts and alcoholics, people that have day-to-day -day dependency issues, to, to somebody maybe just like you, that just wants that little bit of encouragement, wants that little bit of motivation, and wants support to get to that next level. With John Morris Personal Life Coaching, you're in really good hands. A lot of my clients would tell you if they were here now that one of the greatest assets to John Morris Life Coaching is you can see things exactly as you want to see them without fear of being controlled and conformed like a lot of therapists and coaches do. We help you right where you're at to get to the place that you want to be, step by step, to figure out a plan. So if this sounds like something that you would be interested in, having that support, motivation, encouragement, and even education, should you need it, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. Places are limited, so please don't delay. We've got a very, very small window of opportunity remaining. We all need help from time to time, but the difference between success and failure, achieving our dreams, and maybe just letting our dreams go by, depends on the level of help that we have available and that we're willing to accept. So get in touch with me today at John Morris Life Coaching. You'll be glad you did, and I'll see you soon.